Okay. Hello, my kakoa, and welcome to our lesson for the day on buyers and sellers for our grade two lesson plan. We're going to focus on supply and demand. And a part of my group is myself, Kaua. I have Adriana, Megan, Caitlin, Laylee, and Travis. Um, in our lesson plan, the standards that we will go over will be social study standard eight for economics, benchmark, compare the roles of buyers and sellers, and explain how they depend upon each other, and next generation science standard, ask questions, make observations, and gather information to define a simple problem. As a part of our plan, we'll our lesson plan, we're also going to go over some general learner outcomes, such as community contributor, as the understanding that it is essential for human beings to work together. The student will work with their group or partner to share ideas about the supply and demand, which and uh, would you rather questions. Another GLO that we'll cover is effective communicator. The ability to communicate effectively, the student will communicate effectively and clearly through speaking and writing to convey ideas and information. Student will also listen to ideas of class and group members. Our essential question that uh, we would tie all of our information to today will always bring us back to the question of how do buyers and sellers affect each other? So showing that reciprocating relationship between the the objective for the students will be I can explain how shifts in demand or supply affect both buyers and sellers. The students will start with a pretest, in which will be a paper written exam, which has the following questions. And they are simple questions regarding demand or supply shifts. We would read the questions to them regarding poi, uh, clothing for wintertime, mangoes, and also the lychee. And students would circle which ones they think the shift would be. And this would, again, just be a pretest for prior knowledge. The vocabulary words we would focus on would be supply, demand, price, buyer, seller, and good. And once introducing them with the students, we would continue with a read aloud class book, Arthur's Funny Money, and introduce the concept of buying and selling goods. After reading that and discussing as a whole group, we would talk about the sellers and buyers regarding supply and demand and continue the discussion regarding the roles of each of those. After that, we would go to a video. So throughout the lesson, we'll be making sure to ask the students, uh, uh, checking or checking the students for understanding. Um, and then, uh, so one of the things that we will be showing is a video. Uh, this specific video is uh, covering a video game, uh, which I think will be very relatable to the students, uh, since a lot of kids play video games. Um, talking about uh, the supply of a video game and the price that correlates to it. Um, after that, we go into um, demand shift. Uh, we tried to make it very simple for them to understand. So we explained that if there are fewer buyers, the value will go down. And if there are more buyers, uh, then the value will tend to go up. Uh, we will then talk about supply shift, um, also keeping it simple. So if there are less suppliers, less goods, uh, then that cost is, is expected to be higher. Uh, and if there are more suppliers with more quantity of the goods, then we expect the price to go lower. Um, we're going to relate this uh, to them um, by a uh, example of chips. Um, so one of the more popular brands of chips uh, at the elementary school is Takis, uh, as opposed to, to Doritos. Um, so we would you know, kind of tell them that if everybody wants Takis, what would happen to the price? And if nobody wants Doritos, what would happen to the price? Um, so, you know, we kind of have them talk about that uh, with their teammates, with their group members, their neighbors. Um, and then we kind of explain what's going to, what we expect to happen um, because of this uh, demand. Yeah, so we have the Takis with the right shift. Uh, more buyers is going to expect the price to go up. 
and for Doritos, less buyers, uh, the value should be going down. Uh, following those class discussions, we would also have our students turn and talk to their elbow partners about how does demand from buyers have an impact on the supply from sellers based on all the information we already went over with them. Um, and then we would show what it looks like from the perspective of, of a seller. Um, so just going over that sellers affect the shift in a supply and a left shift means going down when there's fewer suppliers, there would be higher costs for goods. And then a rate shift would be going up, which means if there's more suppliers, the cost would be lower. Um, we would tie it back into our essential question and go back to that. How do buyers and sellers affect one another? And discuss that. Um, we would also show this graphic here. So in showing the relationship between buyers and sellers, so buyers demand products based on their wants and needs, and that demand affects the value of the product and number of buyers. And sellers evaluate the demand of the product, and sellers then know what to supply and then are able to provide a price for their good. As a group activity and also class discussion, we would play Would You Rather to get a little bit more practice of the concepts. So there'd be four of these prompts, um, and it would two of them go over supply, two of them go over demand, and students will discuss in their groups of four to five students, and they would have to justify the reasoning for their responses to the class, and we would have the class discussion. Okay, so some of the um, questions that we're guiding throughout these activities, um, obviously our essential question, how do buyers and sellers affect each other? We have the questions, you know, that go with the Doritos and the Takis. And then just um, through, the, through that last um, would you rather activity, asking them what are some ways that the buyer can affect the seller? What are some ways that the seller can affect the buyer? And then finally, we'll close with our summative assessment or our post-test. And similar to their pre-assessment, they have um, some situations. They have to determine if the demand is shifting left or right and the same for the supply. And then finally, we want them to right um we want them to write in their journal also what uh just the answer basically to the essential question um how do buyers and sellers affect each other so they would write that in their journal as well and then we said as a follow-up lesson to lesson one once students understand the vocabulary and the foundational ideas of supply and demand shifts then we can introduce graphs to illustrate that left to right shift in the next lesson and um so we thought about differentiation and being responsive to cultures by um you know, thinking about the different modes of instruction we use, video discussion, group work scenarios, visuals, and also we tried to make our examples very relatable to our culture and community that the kids are living in. And I think that is it. Great job, team. We also provided uh, various ways of instruction through video. Um, I think we did a couple of videos and read them out. And then when we do the would you rather activity, it would be more hands-on and group oriented. You got it. Okay, mahalo.